Hello and welcome to another episode of the Historic Challenges and today as you can see we actually have got a 500cc two-stroke challenge given to us for once so it's been quite a while since we had one of those and the last one we had was at Buriram and I think that was episode two but obviously first we'll check out and see what's on the historic market that took a little bit of time to load that was a little bit weird so we've got well one uncommon thing is Dovi then we've got two commons so we've got we'll buy everything here so the 2012 Ducati the 2002 Honda Pons and Dovi from 2010, which still leaves us with 14,200 diamonds going into the challenge. So if we can get the 15,000, we'll have almost 30,000 diamonds. So that will be mighty impressive. So it's trying to make me be my custom rider, but I don't want to be my custom rider. So obviously in the last the last one we did, Blade is this doing? So I won't Blade's doing again. I think perhaps I might play as Kevin Schwantz actually. Because uh, obviously he's one of the DLC riders along with uh, Arbe as well. So I'll probably play as Arbe next time we do a 500cc challenge. So I'll play as Kevin Schwantz. So it is at Malaysia once again. So obviously we did do the uh, the challenge. Next time we do a four-stroke challenge I will be playing as Burn. Because that was requested. And then after that Barros because that's also been requested. But I can't bit the tracks remember guys. So no point uh, giving me a, a, a track to do for the historic challenges. Because... The uh, charge gets set, so I can't actually decide which track or the conditions to do it in. So Arbe on pole position then. Quite an interesting. I think he was on pole last time as well, was that? I thought it was a Michelin tyre then for a second when I clicked on that. I think he was on pole last time we did one of these challenges. Him and uh, I think it was Lawson were really, really fast. So I suppose without further ado, we will head straight into this. A little bit of a shame that we have to do Malaysia again, because we did that... I mean, I, I like the track, don't get me wrong, but I did it not that long ago, uh, a, you know, a few challenges ago, and there's lots of tracks that we haven't done yet that haven't come up, so it'd be nice if maybe we got a bit more of a varied selection. So you can hear me revving in the background there. Hopefully we don't go, you know, skyrocketing upwards. We have no electronical aids at all, look on the bottom right-hand side of the screen. We, don't even, we can't even uh, change the fuel mixture, so fuel hopefully shouldn't be an issue. We can't even get the front wheel down, though, here. I'm down to 11th out of 13. Uh, we're now 13th, so that's definitely made things a bit more difficult. So we've gone launching into turn one. Oh no. Yeah, I think we might want to redo that one. We've caused a bit of an accident there. I forgot about the lack of engine braking. I'll be honest, I'll be surprised if I can actually win this because the, the 500s, are, I'm so bad at the 500s. So I try and give it like not much throttle so I don't wheelie, but then they all just pull away. So when I start putting more on, I just wheelie. So I'm down to last while I've actually re overtaken McWilliams now as we approach the first corner. The rear is trying to come around on me. Oh, the rear is sliding massively. So this is the first time I've played the 500s obviously since the uh, new update that came out yesterday that changed the physics, although I think it only changed the physics in modern day GP if I'm hearing things correctly, but I could be wrong. At least in Moto2 there was no difference, I could tell. Other than perhaps maybe less wheeling. Oh, I don't know how we've stayed on and how we've not sustained damage there. But John Kaczynski was going so slow in the middle of the circuit. Not a lot I could do. We come back on the track. We're still P12. Trying to learn to keep this front end down. We could perhaps start to maybe carve our way through again in the second. But I'm guessing it's going to be very, very difficult for us to win. Considering how far the other guys are probably going to be in the lead already. Wayne Rainey ahead of us. Oh, I'm trying to break. I can't break where I want to. Obviously, the lack of engine braking is... Probably one of the harder parts of this bike, although the wheeling isn't great as well. Past Wayne Rainey, we're past Arbe now. I'm sure I picked the difficult challenge. They all seem to be going pretty slow, although we've run really wide in there. And that's allowed Arbe to come back through. So we're now up into 8th place once again. Oh, we've understood why through turn 11. So now up to 8th place as we go through turn 12, trying to get the bike turned. Trying to turn it again through turn 13. Roberts Jr. is looking up the inside of Crivier. We've gone really, really wide though here. That's going to allow someone through, surely. It actually hasn't. Look at the fuel we've got. We've got plenty of fuel. Uh, obviously, in the, la the last episode, the fuel was a bit of a problem. This time, not, since I can't even change the fuel mixture. This means if we ran out, that would be incredibly unfair. I can see Valentino Rossi uh, in the pack up ahead. Same with Biaggi as well. So... I'm guessing those guys will probably be coming through. But it's nice that the pack is still there, although Doohan has now hit the front, so... If, we, if I know anything about Mick Doohan, he'll be checking out pretty quickly. 
So we'll have to try and get there before he does so. You can really downshift on these uh, 500s, to be honest, because you could probably hear how much it was revving, because I went down to first gear so early. It's sort of... I'm trying to compensate for the lack of engine braking. If I can just... Uh, seems like they sort of have... They almost have seamless gearboxes on the way down, which is obviously not right. Right, we're closing up on Crivier, so it seems like they're just pretty weak around that part of the circuit. So we've passed Crivier now, up into 7th place, although we're approaching there, but we're going for another couple of moves, we've smacked Max Biaggi out the way! That was totally unintentional. Oh, and now Max has crashed into Kenny Roberts. Right, so we're now up to 5th place, actually. Uh, we've got a little bit of damage conceded as there, there as well. That was a very bad move on my my part, I will, uh, will apologise for that, I wasn't even trying to go for that, I was trying to pass one of them and I ended up diving up the inside of three, just because I broke too late, although to be honest, I wasn't far off really, you know, I, if they weren't there, I probably would still got it stopped, it was just, the AI do break really early for that hairpin, I was looking for the uh, fuel because I was going to try and turn it up into Palmo 2 to maybe blast past Rossi here, but uh, I won't be doing that since I can't change it, so we're now up into P4, you can see doing is trying to escape at the front, so we go into the last corner, that's going to allow Valentino back through, I'm sure of it. I'm sure Valentino would uh, love the sight of this. I'm sure he said in the past that he would, his hero is Kevin Schwantz and he would always love to have raced him. And here we are, we've got Schwantz battling Rossi. So we go to the outside of Turn 1, trying to get the bike stopped. We managed to do so. So we're still still within a shout of a podium, I'm not sure so sure about the victory. Obviously we're not too far behind doing right now, but I don't have... A lot of confidence in my uh, ability to catch him up. Here we go, around the outside of Rossi then. Oh, he's coming back at us. Oh, Rossi's bashed us a little bit there, a bit dirty, but obviously we bashed Biaggi massively before, so we can't complain too much. Here we go, closing from Rossi again. We're going to go around the outside. I've dipped a wheel on the grass and somehow I've stayed on. That's going to allow Rossi back through, though, surely on the power, though. We've got round him now, so up into fourth place. So we close up towards Eddie Lawson. I think Wayne Garden is actually... Uh, reeling in McDoohan here so the Australians could be battling out front massive wheelie out of the hairpin there is that going to allow Valentino to come up the inside uh, it's left a bit of a gap for him hasn't it through turn 11 we've managed to sort of close that off stop him getting through so one more position left and then we're actually in the uh, the diamond gaining positions but Wayne Rainey not Wayne Rainey Wayne Gardner's looking for the move He's taking the lead now, I think, from Doohan. Oh, the rear is really stepping out here. If you look at the rear tyre, it's really, really warm as well, so that's not helping us out at all. It's at the end of that lap then. Gardner is now leading, so Gardner's probably going to try and pull away from Doohan. Going around the outside of Lawson. Can we pull it off into the hairpin? Trailing that front brake, which was probably a dangerous thing to do back then. Because obviously the tyres weren't so good. We're still trying to hang it around the outside. We're now up into third place, Mick Doohan. Not too far in front of us. Maybe we can hunt down Wayne Gardner. I'm not sure. Doing looks like he's struggling for tyres at this point. Although, if you look at my tyres, they're red. So, that's uh, never a good sign. We are really closing up on Doing here, though. Doing has definitely got some sort of tyre troubles. So, we go for the infamous turn 13. Or turn 13 and 14, actually. I suppose it is sort of just one long corner. But it's classed as two different ones. So, yeah. Gardner looks like he's checking out. But we actually could catch up to Doohan here. In the slipstream of Doohan, we're probably going to pass him into this last corner, actually. Around the outside we go. Said we were ahead for a little bit of time there. Oh! Oh! Oh, we just sent Lawson to a massive high side. I tried to cut back on the apex, and he stuck his nose underneath us. And that sent him into a high side. Yeah, so the riding's not been that clean so far in this race. But a 2037 fastest lap of the race now. And I've probably got some more damage from that as well. Oh, and now Doohan's bashing me back out the way. So, yes, I've definitely got some more damage. They're already getting their elbows out here in this uh, 500s challenge. Oh, the inside of Doohan. Oh, oh, can we get it stopped? I think we did. Did we pull that off? There's no way I just pulled that off. I did. I managed to get past Doohan doing that. That is ridiculous. You can tell he's got tyre troubles that I've managed to pull that off. And to be honest, Wayne Gardner is not out of contention here. Look, he's not that far in front of us. And we are actually gaining on him quite a bit here. The win is still on. The win is still on. Obviously, it's not been the cleanest win I think I've ever done in these challenges. I mean, I'll probably accept that, you know, the Biaggi one was more my fault than the, the Lawson one. Obviously, I was just cutting back from my apex, and he didn't realise that. And Wayne must have some sort of tyre troubles, because we've already passed him. I was thinking about maybe catching him in the next couple of laps, and I've just got around the outside of him, as if he's not, if he's, if he's standing still, although he's come back at us. God, we made a slight mistake into the hairpin. But we've now hit the front here in Malaysia. 
in the 500cc challenge. Trying to get the power down. So that's us up into the lead as Kevin Schwantz here in Malaysia. Oh, Duin, Duin! Duin just rammed us out the way. Mick Duin is not going down without a fight here. That's twice on this lap he's now rammed us out the way. And I'm not very happy about it. So we go over the line and we've dipped back into the 204s on that lap. 203.6 for Rainey. So Rainey's coming. Could we see a showdown between Schwantz and Rainey? I don't know where Duin's has gone. I think he went to the car park there at the first corner. So as we're about to start the final lap then, I've not shook off Duin at all. He's still pretty much there. He's eight tenths behind and Rainey is right behind him. And Rainey's a fast AI. So I'm feeling like a Moto2 sort of Argentina race could be happening here. It could be Rainey is going to catch us right at the end because obviously I am running out of tyre at this point. Not that I've ever really been the quickest. I had the fastest lap for a little bit of the race, but uh, Rainey did take it off me. Me and Rainey have both come through from the back, really. So we've got nine tenths ahead of Doohan now, so I think we're probably going to be okay because Doohan is still keeping Rainey behind for now. So as we come through the last corner then, it's going to be a win here for Kevin Schwantz in Malaysia. Here we go, coming up towards the line. We finally won a 500 historic challenge. Wow, so Lawson still ended up fifth even after the crash. That was that's very impressive. Not sure how he managed that. I think he probably would have won. And uh, Biaggi retired, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, we didn't do Max too much good there. Although I suppose he was the one that crashed into Kenny Jr. But it was uh, because we'd obviously bashed him. Uh, I mean, I, I know the riding wasn't particularly the best in that uh, video, so I do apologise a little bit for that. Uh, the 500s, they do just take me a while to get, get used, especially just the lack of engine braking. So I feel like I can outbrake someone and then all of a sudden you're careering into the side of somebody else and there's not much you can do about it. And obviously the Lawson thing, yeah, that was a little bit of a racing incident. Obviously I didn't see him cutting underneath me when I was coming back from my racing line. So uh, yeah, a bit unfortunate that one there. So there we go then, we got our 15,000 diamonds, which brings us all the way up to 29,200. So we're going to have plenty to spare. Which is actually quite good because Simoncelli, a rare, has turned up. So we'll be buying him. So there we go. That takes us down 6,000 already. We buy Valentino Rossi. It's a common. We'll see 1,800. And then 1,700 for the Kajiva team Agostini. So then that takes us down to 19,400. Obviously then there'll be three things to buy in the next episode. But then we should have plenty of diamonds left uh, in the future. So... We'll start, obviously, if we can try and win every challenge, we'll have plenty in reserves. So we should be able to get all the rare riders when they came up, because I think we did have to skip out on Crivier once, I believe, which was unfortunate. So we've got 17 off the 41 riders now, and 15 off the 36 teams. So we're definitely getting through there. We're getting close to almost halfway through. Obviously, there'll probably be a couple more episodes before we are at that point. But I hope you did enjoy that one. Like I said, obviously, apologies a little bit for the rusty riding, but... I think it made it quite an interesting race. Obviously, we had to come through. We didn't have the best start at all, did we? So, I had to fight my way back through the pack. Obviously, we had that contact with Max Biaggi. Then we had the contact with Lawson. But then doing hit us a couple of times as well. It's just the, these things happen, don't they? Uh, so, the AI have knocked me off plenty of times. Uh, I think it's fair that perhaps I knock them back a couple of times occasionally. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the day. I hope you're all staying safe. And I shall see you in the next video.